Hi guys, Mr. Ruffle Waffles here. This is going to be a straightforward guide for you to unlock the Pack-A-Punch machine in IX, also known as 9. The first thing I recommend you do in your game is run out of the spawn, and obviously I've given myself 50k points here just to record this video, but you can earn some points first before you do this, but head downstairs and use the mystery box. It won't always spawn here, of course, but you're going to want some half-decent weapons to be able to do this, and so using the box is generally a good shout. To begin the Pack-A-Punch process, you need to go to one of the four god temples in the corners of the map. I'm going to go to Ra first, because it's the one that's kind of most accessible from spawn, I would say. And when you go to that temple, it can be any one. You don't have to do these in a particular order. Just go to the temple and hold square on this gong to summon a champion. What this is going to do is spawn in some beefy lads for you to take down. In this case, you can see they drop down. I end up having to kill them. My guns aren't amazing, so it's a little bit sketchy, but I recommend that while you're doing this, you make use of your specialist weapons. Those things are really, really strong for this sort of thing. And just generally whittle down the mini boss's health and eventually it'll die or they'll die, depending on if there are multiple. And once you've killed the champion, you'll see that a head has been left in its place. It'll just be a blue glowing head. And if you run through it, you'll pick it up and it will go into your inventory. Next, we're going to go over to Danu's temple in this game. But again, you could go to any of the three gods that you haven't done at this point. And we're going to start the process again. We're going to hold square on the gong. We're going to summon a champion by doing so. We're then going to kill the champion. And the champion, after a little bit of a fight, will drop us another blue glowing head. Two out of four. Now time to rinse and repeat the same process a third time. This time, because I've obviously done Danu and I've done Ra, I need to go under the map to get to the other two god temples. So I'm going to do exactly that. I'm going to go past the pit. I'm going to end up going up and going into my third temple. Same process, just like I said. Hit the gong, summon the champion, take the champions down. And by the way, there won't always be big, beefy, brutey boys. Sometimes there'll be tigers. So make sure you're ready for that eventuality as well. Don't get caught by surprise when it's tigers instead of the big, fat gladiator lads. Then we're going to go over to our final temple. We're going to do the exact same thing again and get our fourth and final head. So far, this has all been pretty easy, right? Well, this is actually kind of the end of the process. All you've got to do now is go downstairs again into the pit area of the map and then find an entrance to the temple. Now, if you see one of these big wooden doors that's shut, don't worry. That's something that we don't need to worry about right now because you can find another opening by just going around the outside of that central temple area. Eventually, you'll find an opening. You can go in, go into the center of the room and hold square to feed the altar here the blood of the champions that you have just slain. Their heads will plant themselves on the little spikes outside the Pack-A-Punch machine and after about 10 seconds or so, they'll sink into the floor and the Pack-A-Punch machine will pop open. You'll then be able to use it as much as you like, which is really nice. It's always going to be there in the temple for you to use. Now then, it wouldn't be much of a Pack-A-Punch guide if I didn't show you a bit of the Pack-A-Punch camo. So here's what it looks like. I'm going to get it on a couple of different weapons here just to give you a little bit of a flavor of how it kind of changes. And I'm also going to use a couple of different double pap abilities, which are the same in all the Black Ops 4 Zombies maps, to be fair, but I figured I'd just show them off a little bit for you anyway, to give you, again, a bit more of an insight into how it's all going to look as part of this particular map's aesthetic. Generally, if you're wondering about advice for what's more powerful than other things, I'm a big fan of Brain Rot, just because that zombie that you transform into one of your teammates can end up killing quite a few other enemy zombies, but... There is quite a long cooldown on it, so it's a little bit of a double-edged sword. However, I'd say the majority of the double pap effects in Black Ops 4 have long cooldowns. There's nothing like Black Ops 3, which is a shame. You feel much less powerful because of it, but it also means that the game is a little bit more balanced. So again, double-edged sword, but I'm sure you guys have your opinions about which you think are the best and which you think are completely trash in this game as well. And if you do, then let me know in the comments down below. Anyway, hopefully this has been a helpful guide for all of you. I have been Mr. Ruffle Waffles. Subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.